In the remaining wilderness of Sri Lanka, living on the outskirts of a village, are families of the endemic Sri Lanka jungle fowl, a magnificent bird closely related to the domestic chicken. There are four species of wild jungle fowl in the world incorporating the domestic species derived from the red jungle fowl. This, the Sri Lanka jungle fowl, is the only wild chicken species found on the island. It is endemic or unique to Sri Lanka and regarded as the national bird. Here is a pair of birds, male and female. This habitat is lowland bamboo rainforest with frogs and black bulbuls in the background after rain. This cock clucks to his companion at a ground bird table set out for them. It is in full mature plumage in breeding condition. And there she comes his companion. These frogs are the authors of the background clicking, signaling. We return to the rooster, guarding his patch at the bird table. It is ready for a fight with rival males. Here's hen. An emerald dove calls in the background alongside clicking frogs. The rooster is very alert to arrivals and investigates disturbances. And here he puffs his feathers and returns to the bird table to feed on rice. Shared with his hen and also an endemic dusky striped squirrel.
the emerald dove calls relentlessly. Younger fowl are fond of rice and drawn by it. One wonders what it is thinking. Rival males are calling in the distance. There it replies with its battle cry, often accompanied by a flutter of wings. This call was characterized as George Joyce by the British planters or Chuck Joy Joyce by E.C. Stuart Baker, author of The Game Birds of India, Burma and Ceylon. Back to the rice. Now it has detected something and rushes off. We hear the flutter of fighting with a rival male. Having sorted the disturbance, the bird returns to its pet and seems to announce his victory. Don't mind the little dusky squirrel, the bird displays its aggression. Here's an endemic snail nearby of the genus Bedomia. And above these events, feeds a giant squirrel.
square rod. This is a different male. Here we note it fighting with another male, though it seems to be little more than a scuffle between familiar birds. A palm squirrel hammers away and a spot-winged thrush sings beautifully in the background. The roosters here seem friendly rivals. Those low howls are from purple-faced leaf monkeys. This bird is foraging in the forest, in this highland habitat, where it is quite windy, about a thousand meters above sea level. An endemic yellow-fronted barbet rings behind the chicken. We have returned to the lowland forest at about 300 meters. A forest that is wet and infested with leeches. Yellow fronted barbets once again call monotonously. Those are the shrieks and the often entreating calls of black bulbuls that are very social birds. Jungle fowls scratch vigorously 
searching for invertebrates. The male and his comb stands out very brightly against the green. Joy Joyce. Black bulbuls continue their din and also the croons of green imperial pigeons. Pass the hen. monkeys make their presence known alongside those barbers. Rainforests are wet places with frequent local showers. Foraging in wet conditions is not rare and the notion that jungle fowl are predominantly from the island's dry zone by E.C. Stuart Baker seems somewhat unfounded. They may be shy but they are opportunistic. What vigorous scratching after a while in the rain the bird can appear somewhat forlorn When it is wet, 
it's time to stay warm and dry off as best as one can. This picture shows a cock lying down sunbathing. And here's the same bird keeping its plumage preened, dry and in order. That's a giant squirrel raising a crescendo in the background. They can walk and run very fast in danger, but this bird is merely descending towards a stream. Here's a hen calling out to its chicks. The air is filled with the din of palm squirrels. The hen's call is less known and less commented on than the rooster. By night, the birds have been recorded as being quite high up off the ground on a perch, as suggested by this hen. And here's her family of two chicks that is fairly typical. The chicks are probably about a fortnight old and present the immature patterning of wild chicks that's more camouflaged than in domestic chickens. Notice the dark head markings. How high young chicks like this can roost or where, unlike adults, is yet to be studied in wild birds. Those melodious calls are from a flock of yellow-browed bulbuls hoping to join in the feeding pet. The chicks instinctively seek mother's protection and she cannot afford to be as ostentatious as the rooster. We have returned to a highland habitat. Here is a female foraging vigorously in the cooler climate. She has more mature chicks that can 
just about be seen. Cicadas call in the afternoon, heralding the approach of dusk. And here's the same female, close to a rubbish dump. We see her two chicks with an endemic Lyard's squirrel. She ascends a rock, revealing her plumage in all its glory. In wild chickens, the hens, wattles and comb are much less expressed than in the domestic species. Here, at a thousand meters, she ruffles her feathers against the cold. <laughs> 